I spent two weeks exploring the beautiful island of Corfu and I came back with some of the most stunning seascape photos I've ever taken. This video I'm going to share with you all my tips and tricks for taking amazing seascape photos. I will talk about everything from choosing the right location to using the right equipment and also I will share some of my favorite compositions and techniques. Now let's begin. So before we start with the tips, I wanted to tell you that probably you are in the same situation like me. You are only in these amazing places with full of opportunities for photography when you are traveling with your family. So the time for photography is limited. My secret is very simple, but at the same time a bit hard. You have to wake up when everybody is sleeping. In this way, probably you will have the best light of the day and the chances for photobombing are less. All right, our first photo tip, it will take your photos to the next level and it's quite simple to do it. You only have to increase the shutter speed. By using a slow shutter speed, you can mesmerize the silk effect in the water. In this way, the movement of the waves will add this dreamy and ethereal effect to your photos. On the other hand, if the colors of the scene are cold, probably you want to add some drama to your photos. In these situations, I don't like to decrease so much the shutter speed because I want to have some textures in the movement of the waves. So in the end, you have to experiment with different shutter speed to have the best results in your photos. And now let's talk about the photo that I have here. What I like about this photo is the shape of the rocks. It creates leading lines that connect different parts of the frame in a very peaceful way. And pretty much that's it. I increase the shutter speed as much as possible to have this dreamy effect in the water. In the next photo, you can see the difference between a short and long exposure. So, what do you think? Which one looks better? Alright, our next tip is also related with the shutter speed and is keep it simple or in other words, go for minimalist photos. So to explain better what is minimalist photography, let me do it with the sample we have here. In these situations, we have to select our subject. In this case, I selected the rock here, which is called the mermaid rock. Once we have our subject, then we have to isolate it, and that's why I came to this part of the beach. Otherwise, if I would be over there, both rocks would be in the same frame. And when we have our subject isolated, then we only have to remove the distractions of the water. And to do that is very simple, and I already explained it. We increased the shutter speed. Well, before I forgot to mention that the best way to isolate our subject is to use a long lens. With a long lens, you only have to make a zoom, and it's done. And pretty much that's it. We focus on the rock F32 to increase our shutter speed as much as possible, and the shutter speed in this case will be around 5 seconds. Fortunately, today we didn't have the light as I expected, so my picture is not gonna be one of my best. Anyway, we had fun. It's not easy to find this beach just for you. Until now, I said that if we increase the shutter speed, our picture will have a much better looking, but I didn't tell you how to do it. Fortunately, the only proper way to make long exposures is to use a tripod. Yeah, I know what are you thinking right now. Traveling with a tripod like this is quite annoying. So that's why I'm gonna give you a solution. So in case that you don't want to travel with a big tripod, the solution may be one of these. This small tripod it won't give you the flexibility of the big ones, but still you will be able to make long exposures. So if you have a small camera and you don't want to travel with a big tripod, this one could be a great idea. Alright, I have to confess that I already took the picture. The light was the best of the travel by now, so I couldn't resist and I have to be fast. Well, the next tip is related to the composition and is valid for all kind of photography. Look for living lines. In landscape photography, the use of living lines is one of the best ways to connect the foreground with the background in a very peaceful way. In this way, the picture will be also well balanced. The most common way to create living lines in seascapes is to use the movement of the waves. The best technique to do it right is to wait until the wave crashes on the shore and the water is going back and in that moment, push the trigger. Anyway, it's not as easy as it looks. Probably you have to try several times until the results convince you. For example, in this picture it took me like 20 times to get the perfect leading line. 
As you can see, today the sea is quite calm, so I have to use the shape of the foreground as a leading line. The next photo, we also focused in the leading lines to create a great composition. And that's it for the part one of this video. In the next part, I will be sharing more tips, including how to find the best locations, how to capture stunning seascape photos in any condition, and much more. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. And in the meantime, if you have any questions about seascape photography, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm always happy to help. Ur et ur te.